they're bargain hunters. Do you always get left out of those big sales? I do. I even got left out of my family portrait. Everybody hates me. <laughs> Not record Randy. So get right down there for his weekly going out of business sale. I'm going to be left out again. My family owns that store. <laughs> well, that's it for now, fans. For the next seven days, we'll be on vacation. But we'll be leaving you in the very capable hands of Big Jack Jackson, who'll be substituting for us. We hope you like him. But not too much. This is Larry Clark. And David Lewis. See you next week. Well, that's it, Dave. We're sprung. If you want to reach me anytime next week, don't. No, Linda and I are going to go off somewhere nice and quiet and just rest. You still going to Las Vegas? Yeah, I can use a little peace and quiet, too. <laughs> Well, what are you doing, Larry? Well, I usually steal one a day, but I'm going to be gone a full week. Boys, I'm glad I caught you. Big Jack Jackson has fallen off the wagon again. But he just got on a week ago. He was celebrating the anniversary. Poor Jack. What happens to our vacation? It fell off the wagon with Jack. Vacation postponed. Uh, Mr. Hutton, Linda, and I were looking forward to that rest. Who's going to do Big Jack's show? Well, I was hoping you would. Well, that's crazy. We'll have to work four hours in the morning and four hours at night. Big Jack was going to do it, and he's a wino. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hutton, we'd like to help you out, but... But there's nothing in our contract says we have to do an extra show for the same measly pay. I don't want to do it, uh, do you, Dave? Well, uh, uh, couldn't you get somebody else? There's no one else available, David. If you do this to me, I promise I'll make it up to you. Yeah, how? Double salary and an extra day of vacation for every day you fill in. Double pay, extra day, I'll do it. David? Absolutely, Dave. Right, Dave? I guess so. Thank you, boys. And I must say that you both behaved in princely fashion. Oh, that's easy, Mr. Hutton, when you're working for a real prince. Don't touch me. <laughs> a prince is never touched by a peasant. He never felt that way when he was a frog and I picked him up in a meadow. Oh, and one more thing. I'll take those pencils. <laughs> Well, Linda's sure gonna be disappointed we're not going away. What are you talking about? It's better you've just doubled our vacation. To a woman, double next week is not better than no vacation now. It's easy money. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. You live five minutes from here. I'm gonna have to commute twice a day. So don't commute. What? Well, you can stay at my place. It'll be just like our bachelor days in Hawaii. Remember those days? The fun, the girls, the parties? Yeah, and... Linda remembers better than both of us. No chance. Why? You don't tell a wife that she can't go on vacation, then ask her if you can stay at the Playboy Club. <laughs> Honey. Hi, darling. Hi. What's going on here? We were supposed to have the apartment painted while we were away, remember? I know, but, but couldn't you stop them? Well, they'd already started before you called me. Mm. Hey, I'm sorry we had to postpone the vacation. That's all right. I only cried for an hour. Besides, we can use the extra money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be careful. The painter put his ladders and planks in there. Oh, well, honey, would you hang this up for me? I'm going to take a nap. Wake me up at four. David, wait! Be careful of the... Wet paint. <laughs> I started in the bedroom. You're telling me. It smells like a turpentine plant. I can't sleep in there. I'm sorry, David. Honey, it's not your fault. You could nap on the couch. Okay. Where is it? <laughs> Under there. Yeah, right. Why are you going to take a nap now? You don't look tired. If I don't take a nap now, I will be tired. It's preventive sleep. Now, as you said yourself, it's only for a few days. Yeah, but in those few days, I'll be spending half my life on the freeway. Careful, honey. It only takes you an hour to get to the studio. Each way. Two round trips a day is four hours. Well, what else can you do? Well, Larry did have a thought. Larry? Yeah, he thought that since his apartment is only five minutes from the studio, I can get a lot more sleep staying there. At Larry's? That's not an apartment. It's a clearinghouse for crazy people. Oh, you're exaggerating. Oh, yeah? The last time we were there, a lady in a bikini walked in with a parrot. A parrot? I don't remember the parrot. <laughs> Honey, husbands and wives shouldn't be separated. We're not going to be separated. I'll only be an hour away. Well, I know it sounds silly, but I just don't like it. Okay, you win. I'll take you over Larry and his crazy friends any day. Honey, do you have to hang pictures now? I'm making dinner. With a hammer? I'm making your chopped liver. 
Well, honey, will you chop my liver later? <laughs> later yet, don't chop anything. I'll take you out to dinner. Oh, thank yeah. you, darling. Okay. Now you go back to sleep. Back? I haven't been yet. I'll wake you up at four. Okay, honey, thanks. You're welcome, darling. Mm. <laughs> you sure there's nothing I can get you? No, honey, I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, you go back to sleep now. <laughs> thanks, sweetheart. You're welcome, darling. <laughs> Sandy, do you have to yell so loud? Well, who ever heard of yelling soft? <laughs> Hi, Linda. Shh, Sandy. Davis trying to see if I can't talk to you now. Boy, some reception for a friend who brings you her mother's fish. Thanks for the fish, Sandy. I'll, I'll call you on the phone later. Okay. <laughs> Bye, David. <laughs> to make our community a better place to live. Elect George Seven and keep light industry out of the suburbs. Remember, a vote for Seven can make our community a better place to live. There's not supposed to be an election now. It's a special election, David, to fill Congressman Daly's seat. He got that TV series. <laughs> right, dear, you go try and get some sleep. <laughs> Honey, honey, uh, w would you get the phone, please? I can't find the phone. <laughs> how, how do you lose a phone? I didn't lose it. The painter put it somewhere. Yeah. Well, where did he put it? No. I mean, you hire painters and they lose phones. Honey. Oh, here it is. Hello? No, I'm not mad at you, but I think David is. I'll call you later, Sandy. Well, this is not going to work. This is just not going to work. I'm sorry, David. Oh, honey, it's not your fault. I mean, it's just very difficult to sleep in an invasion. Where are you going? Well, it's about time to go back to work anyway. David, I'm worried about you. You honey. call me. Ben, I'm sorry I called. I hope David isn't mad. Ah! <laughs> That was music to cuddle up to by Nathan and the saxophones. The two voices you're hearing are Larry Clark and David Lewis substituting for Big Jack Jackson on his late evening platter party. Here's a traffic bulletin. 5,000 screaming fans have completely bottled up the freeway around the Hollywood Bowl. Alternate routes are suggested. And here's the reason for that tie-up. The group that broke it up at the bowl tonight, Leather Jacket Lenny and the Sweethearts with Chain Drive, Disc Brakes, and you. <laughs> you better read this again after the next record, Dave. Boy, that's all I need, a traffic tie-up. So why don't you stay at my place? Because I don't think I can get any sleep there, Lair. Are you kidding? I took a terrific nap this afternoon. I can't. Ah, oh, Linda won't let you. No, it's not that. It's just that I need my rest, and I don't think I can sleep in a place where a girl walks around in a bikini with a parrot. <laughs> Sharon, I haven't seen her in months. Thanks for reminding me, Dave. See? See? <laughs> Now we return you to tonight's feature in our continuing festival of war films. Those bad guys are going to get to the lieutenant. You just watch. Sandy, don't tell me what happened. Okay. <laughs> Funny about a war. No, here. How can you watch television and listen to the radio? Easy. Eyes there, ears here. Larry's <laughs> hysterical. You want to hear? I'm trying to watch the picture. Okay, you watch. This is where he gets it. Sandy! <laughs> oh! Told you! <laughs> I think I'll watch it next week. Boy, he sounds pooped. Pooped? He looks dead. No, here on the radio. David, he just yawned on the air. Want to hear? No, I feel guilty enough already. Well, if you feel so guilty, why don't you let him stay in town with Larry? And all his kooky friends? I resent that. Present company accepted. No, oh, Linda, I'm shocked you don't trust David. Of course I trust him. Oh, boy, he just did it again. Let me have that, please. Oh, dear. 
Again? No, they just announced that the Hollywood Freeway's backed up for three miles. That does it. Who are you going to call? David. Well, he knows the freeway's backed up. He just told us. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, honey. Are you feeling all right? Uh, that doesn't quite say it. You sound awful. Oh, that says it. <laughs> David, I have something to tell you. Somebody stole our bed. <laughs> I've been thinking and talking to Sandy, and I don't want you to drive home on that crowded freeway. I want you to stay with Larry. You do? Yes. Hey, thanks, honey. That's great, really. That's terrific. Well, you don't have to be that happy. <laughs> well, I'm not happy, but I'm happy. You know what I mean. Call me before you go to sleep, okay? Before you go to bed, lock the door. All right. I love you. I love you, too. Good night. You gonna stay? Nah, uh, that Linda is one in a million. Look, if I stay at your apartment, no crazy parties. I just want to get some sleep. Are you kidding? I'm working as hard as you are. I need my sleep, too. Look, after we sign off tonight, we'll grab a sandwich, I'll call a few of the gang. Larry! And tell them no party tonight. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Sharon. You got my message, huh? How's your parrot? Oh. Well, you'll get him back. He knows his name and address. He'll tell somebody. <laughs> Listen, would you like to join us for a sandwich? Same place. Okay, hon. Bye. Larry, buying a girl a corned beef sandwich is no party, Dave. Let's popcorn. All gone. Well, in that case, I better be going. <laughs> thanks for the television, Linda. And thanks for keeping me company. And you know, Sandy, I really feel so much better now that I told David to stay at Larry's. Well, you made the right decision. A marriage should be based on trust. Good night, Linda. Good night, Sandy. Oh, and Linda. If there's any trouble with David over what happens at Larry's, remember, I'm on your side. We will! You haven't been here since I redecorated my little monk's quarters. Oh, it's nice. I only hope your new couch is nice and soft. Oh, no, you're taking the bed. No, Larry, I'll take the couch. No, sirree, you're much more tired than I am. You're taking the bed, complete with contour sheets and recuperating vibrator. Do they have a vibrator? Yeah, there's a little slot near the headboard where you put a quarter in. You have to put money in your own bed? It's stupid, but it relaxes me, and it's a good way to save money. If you need anything, just holler. No, all I need is sleep. Go to it, pal. Right. I'll wake you about five. Okay. Great. Hey, this is gonna be beautiful. Yeah. Six wonderful hours of sleep. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Uh, you got change for a buck? <laughs> I was. Oh, did this wake you up? No, the radio did a half hour ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, how's that? Much better. Good night. Night, Dave. Oh, Lair. Yeah. Uh, the vibrator. I told you, put a quarter in, it'll turn on. No, how do you turn it off? It's shaking my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I can just see it. You're better than she is. <laughs> Larry. She never would. She never could. Larry. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Uh, hold on just a second. I'm being paged. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> what you doing? I'm uh, talking on the phone, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 could you and your cute, your cute little girlfriend hold it down for a minute? I'm talking to my mother, Dave. <laughs> your mother? Yeah, she's telling me how she beat my Aunt Lottie in a gin tournament. Huh? Uh, she said she used real gin. <laughs> Beautiful, Mom. Beautiful. Dave. Yeah, there. If you get up again, don't make any noise. I'm a very light sleeper. <laughs> Larry. Larry. Do I? Larry, the door. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. You like sleeper, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. 
right there. Ta-da! Wake you up? No, you had to get up and answer the door anyway. <laughs> Where's the booze? Larry, goodbye. Oh, wait just a second. Hold on. What are you talking about? This may come as a shock to you, but I'm leaving. No? Right now. I'm going home. Don't go. Watch it. Hey, uh, Larry, don't worry about your pajamas. I'll take them home and have them washed. Isn't that sweet? I told you to watch it. And that goes for you, too. Uh, look, mister, I'm not interested in your girlfriend. She's my wife, but I'm not either. <laughs> it's 625. It'll be warm and smoggy today, and this is Larry Clark. The voice you're not hearing is my partner, Dave Lewis, who undoubtedly overslept. And here's something to wake him up. It's Cannonball Carol with the Big Mouth Lullaby. Huh. Where is he? I told you, Mr. Hutton, I don't know. For some reason, he couldn't sleep, and he left my place at 2 o'clock this morning. That tells me nothing. I don't know anything else. That much I know. <laughs> Look, when he comes in, I'll call you first thing. But this isn't like David. He's the dependable one. I feel we should call him at home and find out if anything is wrong. Why wake him up? He was very tired when he left my place. Mr. Hutton here. Oh, hello, Linda. I was just about to call you. Did David oversleep? What? What? I... He... What is it? What's wrong? Yes, of course, Linda. As soon as I can. Lawrence, get me a drink of water. I'm feeling a bit faint. Oh, what is it? Bad news? Is it Dave? Is, is he hurt? Worse. Killed? Worse. Worse than killed? David is in jail. David, are you all right? Yeah, honey, I'm fine. David, what are you doing? Here he is, Lieutenant Breitbart. Sit down, Lewis. Nick, call us and then we'll find out if the woman's okay. Yes, sir. What woman? David, please tell us what happened. David, I know your rights. There is no need for you to say anything that will incriminate you. Sir, if you don't mind, would you and Mrs. Lewis please sit down? I'll do the interrogating. Well. Thank you. David, are you incriminated? No. I don't think so. Am I? I don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. Now, tell me what happened. Well, in a way, it was your fault, Mr. Hutton. <laughs> don't write that. Nothing is my fault. <laughs> you to sit down. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I worked late. After the show, I went to Larry's apartment. No, not immediately. We took Sharon home first. Sharon? Sharon? Please. Honey, I don't even know her last name. All I know is she's a friend of Larry's who eats corned beef. And then what happened, Mr. Lewis? Oh, well, when, when I left Larry's, I remembered we came in his car, and mine was at the studio. Mm -hmm. There were no cabs, so I started to walk back. Well, I passed his motel. David. <laughs> it was a nice one. They said we'd take children and pets. <laughs> well, I got a room, and it was the nicest sleep I ever had. <laughs> For about an hour. <laughs> Hello? This is Mr. Lewis in room 13. Would you call next door? They're making a lot of noise. They're having a party. Uh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Thank you. Go away! Is that you, Sheila? I'm not leaving until you open the door, Sheila. Sheila! You wait, Sheila. <laughs> Sheila's not here. Why don't you try next door? They're having a party there. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry to bother you. I gotta find Sheila. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sheila! I know you're in there, Sheila! <laughs> Hello. This, this is Mr. Lewis again. They're making more noise than ever. <laughs> 
Uh, you want to hear him? <laughs> you see that? I'm getting desperate. Will you please? Thank you. <laughs> well, Lieutenant, I thought that was it, but I was wrong. Uh. <laughs> I told you, Sheila's not here. I told you, Sheila's not here. Who's Sheila? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, it was some guy looking for Sheila. Then you saw the man looking for her? Yeah. Is that a crime? It might be for a guy who told the manager he was getting desperate. Could you change your clothes, please, and come on with me? I didn't do anything. Maybe not, but there's an unconscious man lying next to her. You're taking me in because there's an unconscious man? How do you know he's not sleeping? You don't usually sleep with a bookcase on your nose. <laughs> David, you didn't make that man unconscious, did Mrs. you? Mrs. Lewis, he was the only one there. Now, please sit down. Here's the whole thing, Lieutenant. Thank you, Nichols. Yes, sir. But surely, Lieutenant, it must be obvious Will that... Will you sit down? He makes me sick. <laughs> But you heard his story. You must realize that he's innocent. He is innocent, isn't he? Well, Mrs. Hungel has just signed a statement. Mrs. Hungel? Would, would that be Sheila? That's right. Good. I couldn't stand any new characters. <laughs> Incidentally, the man will be all right. He had a slight concussion. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it, but that's good. David, do you have any idea what happened? Well, yeah, honey, I, I do have an idea. Lieutenant? Go ahead. Well, the way I see it... Tell it to them. To them, yeah. <laughs> well, the way I see it was one of those triangles. David, are you implying something sordid? The man that came to my room looking for Sheila was her husband. He found her next door at the party. And wacko. He hit... Poor Sheila. <laughs> he hit the other guy. Right, Lieutenant? Wrong. Oh, the man who came into your room was a boyfriend. Her boyfriend? Oh, dear, it's getting worse. <laughs> well, that's what it says here. Apparently, she had promised the boyfriend that she wouldn't go back to her husband. You mean she left her husband, lied to her boyfriend, and went back to her husband? Uh-huh. And that's what the party was all about. Big reconciliation. Lieutenant, if the record has been sufficiently clarified, may we leave? Sit down. I have never in all my life. Now you can leave. Police brutality! <laughs> Linda, David, what are you doing? Well, I'm signing for my valuables in Larry's pajamas. But it's 8 o'clock. You still have two hours of your show to Mr. do. Mr. Hutton, sure. this man needs some sleep. He's been up for 36 hours. A job is a job. Talk about brutality. Let's have lunch and do that sometime. 